Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Coping Together. Uh, today's episode is facilitated by myself. My name is Alan Bruns, and I'm one of the program coordinators at the Mental Health Association of Central Florida. Today, I'm joined by Nicole Severio. She is the project director at Project Harmony. Uh, she has a master's degree in mental health counseling from UCF, uh, and she received that in 2011. And she's been a part of the um, MFRI for, since 2013. We're also joined by Marangeli Velez, who is a recruitment specialist at Project Harmony with a Bachelor's of Science in Psychology from UCF and a, currently a graduate student a, in UCF's Counselor Education Program on the Marriage, a Couples, and Family Therapy track. Being that Project Harmony is a research study that offers relationship education, that kind of brings us into our subject today, which is maintaining relationship during COVID-19. So Mara and Nicole, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having us. We're so excited to be here. Of course. Um, before we jump into the questions, would you mind just giving a little bit more information about Project Harmony and the services you offer there? Sure. So you mentioned already that Project Harmony is a federally funded research program. Um, we provide services through UCF, and um, because it's funded by the federal government, we don't have any costs associated with any of our services. So I think that's something really important to, to share with everybody. We prioritize or focus on giving out, uh, providing services to the community that help people have healthier relationships. So we work on communication skills, conflict resolution skills, learning more about yourself and how that would impact how you interact with your partner or the other people in your family that you love. Um, and so that's a huge part of the program. And in addition, we also focus on some professional development and some financial development. Um, Mara, I don't know if you want to share a little more about that. Yeah, so on the vocational piece we mentioned, um, and we'll get into it a little bit more with the recording, but we want to focus on one of the aspects of life that also causes a stressor, um, and we know that it can be financial. So we do um, money management, budgeting, um, we look at finances, um, and we try to connect the community with some resources, um, so like resume writing and, and all that good stuff. That's awesome. Uh, and I know that you guys also like uh, are doing it online right now. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So we've transitioned like a lot of businesses, a lot of people um, had to work remotely. So do we. Um, so we're still providing the community all of the tools and resources, not just in the comfort of their own home, um, which is a win win. We've had people on our list that for whatever reason or another haven't been able to participate. Um, but now there's a little bit more downtime. Now there is a little bit more flexibility. Um, so we're still providing everything that you could possibly need um, to send to you via videos. Awesome. Um, so that's a great, uh, I think it's awesome that you guys are still offering this and just the fact that it's free and for anyone who's really interested in it, that is like a super cool thing. And I know that it could benefit people. I know even for people who aren't even in a relationship, it has information that could be extremely useful for them. So that's awesome. Um, so I guess I could just jump into the first question, uh, which I would just like to start off by asking uh, what effects of COVID-19, you know, having us quarantine at home and having to be together with your partner for very long extended periods of time, uh, what are the effects those are happening, both negative and positive? Yeah, um, that's a really great question. Um, and I think we wanted to start off with the bad news first about what, what has happened with COVID-19 and the stay at home orders. And so what we found is that there's just been a really dramatic increase in the level of stress that individuals, couples and families are experiencing. People are legitimately concerned for their health, their finances, the uncertainty of the future. Um, and on top of that, a lot of parents have taken on the burden of um, education and full-time caretaking of their children, um, which is can be really time consuming and energy consuming. Um, and just in general, like a decrease in privacy um, and just personal space day to day. I don't know if you actually guys saw, but my husband walked in right now in the back of the screen a few minutes ago. So that's kind of an example, right? Like we're, we're working and we're sharing space with all the people that we live in. Um, and so, you know, stress can make us feel more irritable. Um, sometimes we make, or more likely to make some um, negative interpretations or assumptions about what other people's motivations are and just feel a little bit less hopeful about the future. Um, so the, all of those things can lead to increased conflict in relationships. Um, and so for those reasons, we really believe in our cause more, even more now than ever, because 
maintaining your relationships in a really healthy way um, is going to be, it's going to help you kind of be able to kind of go through these times in, in a more, yeah, healthy and productive way. Yeah. And if we were to switch it um, and look at the positive effects or the positive things that do or have arisen from from all of this, it is that shared quality time, not only with your partner, but with the children and the family in general. Um, So kind of reestablishing the interest or reestablishing things that you may have forgotten about your partner that you knew from the beginning if you've been married for years. Um, Something else that we think is beneficial is the opportunity and taking the time for personal development. Um, So on a personal note, I've gotten really into puzzles and Sudokus and things for my own well-being that's away from screens. Um, So things that before or even reading for fun that I hadn't done in like a year. So just establishing routines within myself that I maybe lost along the way in the craziness of life. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's, you know, great that, uh, you know, the self-confinement can sometimes uh, be a beneficial thing and you can use it to improve yourself, as you said. But as Nicole said as well, uh, conflict does arise when you're in a small space with someone for such long periods of time, sharing space and working together can be difficult. Uh, So for couples who are uh, in those smaller spaces or, you know, with each other so long, there is definitely conflict that's going to arise, sometimes for even very small things. So what are some ways to prevent conflict from coming up and uh, ways to manage it if it does? Yeah, so for this question, we really thought that resources like ours um, would be really, really great uh, starting points for a lot of families and individuals um, because we are providing you with all of the tools that you would need to be able to learn how to prevent conflict and honestly manage conflict when it comes up because we don't want to create unrealistic expectations. Like conflict is really a natural part of any relationship, especially at times of increased stress. So just having the adequate tools to be able to manage that conflict when it comes up would be um, something that's really helpful. And we provide all of that through Project Harmony. Um, some other tools that, that we actually go much in, much more into detail during the workshops is um, kind of being open about your expectations and talking through with the people that you're sharing your home and your space with um, and just being flexible at times about uh, what those expectations might be because sometimes we have to adjust them um, and communicate about them. So that's something that a lot of times can prevent some, some conflict for for people and families, couples and individuals. Um, We also ask everybody to kind of think about the assumptions that they're making um, and the interpretations they're making about other people's behaviors because when we're really stressed out, we tend to make those more negative, right? Like if, if my partner forgets to take out the trash, I might assume that they're doing that on purpose or that they're not trying to help, right? When it might just be, um, that they truly forgot or that they're overwhelmed with other things or feeling stressed. So um, instead of kind of jumping to conclusions, really trying to have come from a place of curiosity and um, ask open questions so that the communication can be there and you don't have to struggle over something that truly was just a misinterpretation. Um, So those are a couple of the tools. And then um, I'll let Mara talk about the third one, which is about um, wellness, really important to us. Yeah, so I wanted to add really quickly that we hear the, what sounds like a cliche now, right? Like communication is key, but it has been so true for so long and even more so now. Um, Just like Nicole was saying, there are some times where we might be mind reading our, what our um, partner is saying or misinterpreting what what is being said, but open communication and specific communication is is still very much important. Um, And as Nicole was saying, the wellness piece with couples and being able to um, do things together for their well-being. So we highly recommend, you know, um, exercising together, Um, doing things like journaling on the side, like letting those things vent in a very healthy way um, so that it doesn't reflect or show in the relationship in the future, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, it definitely does. 
and I think those are some great points. Uh, and I know that uh, doing things together can sometimes build a bond as well. And you, you know, you can still use the time you have together, even though it's probably not in the best circumstances to, you know, continue your bond together and stuff and, and build your relationship. So great advice, guys. Thank you so much. Um, and to maybe go a little bit off of, instead of talking about uh, couples who are living together and spend a time with that way there are some couples who are very new and the relationship hasn't quite uh you know become to the point where they are living together or anything so for those types of couples um what are some ideas for dates uh for them or for couples who are even living together uh, that can help keep things exciting uh you know and uh like if they're at different residences and they can't really see each other what are some date ideas for them yeah, I can start with the long distance relationships um, because I think, especially now, this is the time and era of technology. So it's time for us to use it. Use those platforms and surfaces that we can connect visually. So be it, you know, Zoom calls or um, Skype calls or whatever um, is most effective. And then the good old just talking on the phone, like that never goes out of style, never goes out of fashion. Um, something to think about is how important humor is especially during times of stress um, and times of challenge. Um, so sending your partner a friendly, you know, a joke or sending them a funny meme, just keeping things really interesting um, and using those video chats to have a virtual dinner. So I'll eat my dinner, you eat your dinner, but we're eating together. Um, you can watch a movie together. I mean, there are so many things that couples can do at a distance to still be socially safe. Um, still caring about each other and still maintaining the and enhancing the relationship during this time apart. Absolutely. And, um, and the creativity lately with this stuff has gone up the roof. Like you can find so many good ideas online um, for couples and families that are at home and are still following stay at home orders, you know, um, doing things like creating a date night in your own living room or a candlelight dinner um, is a great idea. A picnic in your own backyard or your balcony, if you have access to that, can also be super cute and engaging. Um, and things that are themed, like game nights or movie nights um, that are for the whole family or just for the couple can be really awesome too. So I think um, we try really hard to kind of post some of these ideas in our Instagram. Um, so that's something that you can um, follow us on. What's the matter? How, how, the, is it MFRI? <laughs> yeah, the MFRI um, Instagram. Every Monday we try to incorporate ways to connect um, and we do it for couples, we do it for families, we even do it for friendships. Um, so a lot of times especially with everything going on right now, it can be easy to kind of be in your own bubble and be in your own family space. Um, but we're connecting with those that are important to you, with those that you network with um, is important as well. So every Monday, ways to connect. <laughs> And I would say that this is an, an especially important aspect of uh, relationships to maintain because that positive bonding, like uh, was mentioned before, can really create a lot of resilience. So having fun together and connecting and feeling good around each other helps us deal with conflict uh, in a much healthier way. And uh, just to make it easier, and everyone will put that Instagram link in the comment section below as well. So you could just click on that really quick and uh, take a look at all those awesome tips and uh, ideas that you guys are coming up with. Um, and just to go into the next question, kind of focusing a little bit about parents, uh, for those who are you know, currently at home with children, uh, what are some ways that they can you know, secure that time for themselves and also make sure to care for their children effectively? Yeah, um, for this one, the, the thing that came up for us when we were really thinking about it and what we've heard from a lot of parents that had to quickly transition and adapt to this new way of living um, is that most people find it really helpful to create um, routines throughout the day. And so routines for your children and kind of boundaries around what their schedule looks like can really help um, not only um, create some sense of normalcy for the child, but also carve out some space here and there for parents to engage in some self-care or honestly, sometimes to just get things done. Like you have to do the laundry or you have to send an email for work. Um, having that routine will be able to assist in that. So thank Things like having a specific uh, bedtime for your child that's uh, pretty essentially the same every day. Um, maybe that creates a couple of hours for you uh, while they're asleep and you can still do some work or do some um, self-care um, or things like 
30 minutes of reading or 30 minutes of art time every day or three times a week. Um, things like that can really help with carving out some space for, for parents. Um, we've also heard really often that parents do this tag team kind of situation where one person maybe takes the lead on dinner or breakfast and the other person uses the time to be able to do the things that are important to them um, in that particular moment. So um, if you are in a two parent household, uh, really working as a team is a really good idea. Yeah, and I can't help but also think about the households that maybe have one parent or um, that it's a divided family or whatever the case may be, it's really important to have that me time. And, and I know we're in a time right now where it might seem wrong to be a little selfish, but having me time is very important, especially for just the harmony in the household and, and children are sponges. They can absorb the way that the parents are behaving or communicating or can tell if they're stressed. Um, so definitely doing something, um, for example, if the kids are old enough, um, kind of create a movie night for them, make popcorn, create ices or slushies, give them a soft blanket, leave them in the living room, um, and then just go and into the room and read a book or do some yoga or do some meditation, do anything for the person because this is going on for a while and we wanna make sure that everyone in the household is kind of out of balance within themselves as well. Mm -hmm. And I know that one issue that parents are dealing with is uh, their children see, since they're at home a lot, uh, they kind of feel like they're on vacation, uh, so they don't take their work seriously. So I could definitely see how having like a scheduled regimen of you have to do this and this and this and this will make them feel more organized as if they were in school. Um, so definitely great advice there. Um, and then for my final question, uh, you know, even before uh, COVID-19 uh, came into effect and impacted us uh, so much, uh, one of the leading disputes uh, at home between couples is related to finances. And now with the virus causing a large loss of income for many families due to layoffs and furloughs, um, what are some recommendations you would make to help with those uh, stressors? Yeah, we thought this was a really important question as well, because even, yeah, like you said, even before the pandemic and all this uncertainty that has really come in terms of finances and the economy, um, money is the number one argument starter for couples. I mean, money is stressful. Um, a lot of times it's very closely tied to our personal values um, and it can represent stability or peace of mind for a lot of people or for most people, right? Um, so we're really sensitive to the fact that many families are struggling right now um, with their finances. And our recommendation is really to reach out for the resources in the community that are able to help. Um, through for Project Harmony, for example, we have a workshop that's dedicated effective budgeting. So really considering how much money is going to be coming in and how do our expenses look like? And so how do we balance that out? And what are the adjustments that we have to make? Um, so that that can be a potentially really good resource. We also assign everybody a case manager and that person can connect you to other resources in the community that might be able to help. Um, but there's a, a lot of uh, organizations in the community that are dedicated to helping with some of these financial struggles that are very, very real right now. Um, yeah, and we would like to add to um, that we don't want people to feel that they're alone doing this. Like a lot of people are experiencing the same challenges and struggles and maybe in relationships or in families, it might seem easier to shove those feelings down and try to figure it out, you know, be very A-type and try to figure things um, the right way or a certain way, but speak to your partner, not because they'll have a solution, not because they'll, you know, rub it in your face or anything, but because communication is really important and venting to someone is really important, um, especially during stressful times. Um, we also want to add to everyone to be very careful. Um, we know that there are a lot of resources and a lot of opportunities for help. Um, but we also know that with that come a lot of risk and a lot of people trying to do not so good things. Um, so definitely just doing research on whatever it is that you might be applying for um, and just being very, very aware of those things. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, that's all the questions I have, but just going a little bit off of what you said, uh, we encourage you to reach out for help, you know, with those resources you have in the community. Project Harmony is one, the Mental Health Association is another one. Um, and we're going to give all of our information to contact us and to, uh, you know, get into the program at part of Project Harmony in our comments section, so be sure to check that out. But we really encourage you to take advantage of these programs 
programs because they are uh, of no cost, you know, Mental Health Association and Project Harmony. So we definitely recommend, you know, reaching out and trying to get help if you are struggling at the moment. Uh, and sometimes, and it's not a sign of weakness, you know, sometimes you need that, that, that help and getting it is really important. Um, so thank you both for taking the time to join me uh, with to join me today. Uh, and uh, is there anything else you guys would like to add about the program or how to get in contact or anything like that? Yeah, I kind of speaking about this, um, this concern of finances, uh, we, I don't know if we mentioned already, but we recognize that participating in our program is an investment of time. And so generally, or always with participation in Project Harmony, there's incentives of uh, Walmart gift cards to help families in need right now. So completing the full program, you can gain up to $100 in Walmart gift cards per uh, person participating. So um, we just kind of want to highlight that, and especially now at times when people might need a little extra help. So it's a, it's a thank you from us to everybody who participates because we know that it's an investment of your time to, to be part of Project Harmony. Um, and aside from that, I think it would be nice if we uh, say the phone number, I'm sure we'll add it in the links, but you can reach us at 407-823-1748. Um, and actually most likely Mara would pick up the phone if you call our main line there. Um, and to sign up, it's just a few minutes on the phone with Mara, um, we'll gather some of your information and explain the whole program to you. Um, but we're really excited and proud about what we have to offer um, and just really happy to be one of the many great resources that are available right now to the community. Yeah, and if anyone has questions, um, any hesitations, um, I encourage you to call the number as well and then um, to provide with as many details as possible. Um, I want to explain everything from A to Z and the whole program is voluntary and at no obligation. So just wanting to make sure that it's a good fit for everyone. Awesome. Uh, I think that was very well said and a great way to end it. So thank you both for uh, meeting me with me today. And I hope that everyone's able to take something meaningful from this conversation. And we encourage you again to reach out for help if you need it. Um, but thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Goodbye, guys. Bye.